Hey guys, this is Inessa. Welcome back to yet another video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm having a wonderful day. So today we're going to talk about the Godox V1 Flash and how I use it on a photo shoot. So stay tuned and we're going to get straight into it. So before we begin, this video is not sponsored by anyone. Godox did send me two Godox V1 for me to use in this video. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm just going to give you my thoughts after using these lights for a month. As I have said multiple times on other videos about products, this is not a review and I will not be covering anything about light temperature, light output, etc. in this video. If you want technical reviews, there are multiple videos out there that covers that. So if you're looking for that information, stop watching this video immediately. Good. For all that's still here, let's begin. So what's the Godox V1? Simply put, it's a portable speed light with one difference. It has a round head instead of the standard rectangular head, which is the shape that's normally associated with speed lights. The head is also magnetic, so you can attach light modifiers to it very easily. Godox also sent me the Godox AKR1, which included a range of modifiers and they all had magnetic connections, but the only one that I actually use on this shoot you will see in this video is the barn doors. If this flash looks familiar to you, well it should because it's a cheaper alternative to the Profoto A1 speed lights. At the time of this video, the Godox V1 is around 260 bucks and the Profoto A1s is around 800 bucks, which is quite a price difference because you can get two of the Godox V1 and still have change as compared to the Profoto A1. The Godox V1 can be used both on and off camera. I use this flash at a wedding with it on and off the camera. The flash can even be used as a remote on the camera to control other Godox flashes, which I also did at this wedding. So if you're invested in the Godox system, this flash works nicely with your other Godox flash units. That said, so how does the Godox V1 hold up on an actual photo shoot? Well, let's find out. My goal for these two setups was to use the Godox V1 lights to create a few cinematic images. On this first setup, here's the gear that I use. I use the Godox V1 lights, two of them. I use one long focus reflector. I use one seven inch reflector, and I also use one CTO gel. In terms of the positioning of the two lights, camera right behind the subject, I put the seven inch reflector on the Godox V1 light with the CTO gel. For this light, I wanted it to be positioned as high as I could because I wanted the light to fill the room. I don't recall the power I had for this light. In fact, I don't remember any of the power settings because generally I set the power to taste. So once I dial it in, I just set it and I just keep going. So apologies for not knowing the power output, but I do know it was not at full power in any of the setups. All right, so once this light was set up as I liked, I then moved on to my second light in this first setup. For this, I positioned the light camera left. This light had the long focus reflector on it. I thought I needed this long focus to help with the focus of the light, but I think I could have gotten away with using just the seven inch reflector. For this light, it didn't have any gel, my only concern for this light was to ensure it was hitting the subject's face. The problem that I encountered with this light was it initially was focused on the subject's chest, which was very distracting because she was wearing a white dress. 
So for this light, I really had to work with it to ensure it was focused on her face. Now my second setup was a little bit more complicated as I had to include a few more lights to get the images where I wanted it. On this setup, here's the gear that I used. I used the Godox V1 lights. I used the barn doors from the Godox AK R1 kit. I used three seven inch reflector plates. I used two CTO gels. I used the Godox AD400 and the Godox AD600. Now let me explain the purpose and positioning of each light. Let's start first with the light behind the subject. So behind the subject, like before, I had the Godox V1 with the reflector plate and the gel. However, instead of that light being positioned camera right, it was directly behind the subject and positioned high as I could put it. The reason it was positioned that high was for the same reason as before. I wanted a warm light to fill the entire room, but instead of it coming in from camera right, it would be coming from above. By doing this, it would create a nice hair light for the subject. Now, because I moved this light, I had to replace that light with the Godox 8600 to camera right. The Godox 8600 had a reflector plate and the same CTO gel. The reason I had to put this light there was to help fill the shadows in the background and a little on the subject with a warm light. Now, let's talk about the two lights in front of the subject. The Godox V1 was positioned camera left with the barn doors. The barn doors were closed down so that it could allow just a sliver of light to escape and hit the subject's face, which created a dramatic image. Now the final light was the Godox AD400, which was positioned camera left with a reflector plate facing away from the subject positioned to the wall. The only purpose of this light was to fill the shadows on the subject. The reason this light was important was because the barn doors on the Godox V1 was only focused on the subject's face, which created a dramatic image, but I wanted to get some details in the shadow, so this light assisted with that. We used to be so good together, think body and clad, yeah, that kind of vibe, and love that couldn't last forever, explosive right. Conclusion, these Godox V1 lights are amazingly versatile because not only can you use it on a photo shoot like I did, but you can use it in a wedding like I did as well and other events. You can use it on and off camera, but more importantly, you can use it as a master to control other Godox flash lights. The only question mark I have about these lights is the durability over time. I only had these lights for a month and change, so I'm curious if it can hold up with all the flaws that is bound to happen over time. That is it guys, another video in the can for 2020. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button on this video. Put some comments down below, let me know what you guys think, what you guys think about the lights. Let me know what you think about the images. Put those comments down below, let me know. I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them. And guys, please share this video with your friends and family if you think it will be helpful to them. And if you got this far in this video and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified of future videos that I release. <laughs> All right guys, so that is it. 
take care. I'll see you guys on the next video later.